I'm still feeling bad. I uh, just took some medication, but I wanted to. When you are faced with unexpected situations, like getting sick or having an emergency, your whole life can be thrown off balance. Now add in the fact that you have diabetes, and these difficult days can be even more of a challenge. That's why it's a good idea to be prepared for both sick days and emergencies ahead of time. Anyone who is feeling under the weather for whatever reason knows that being sick is no fun. But when you have diabetes, you need to be especially careful when you are sick because illness has a direct impact on your blood glucose level. Illnesses will increase your, your, your glucose level. If you get a cold, if you get an infection or ear infection, you get any kind of infection, you get a cut on your hand and it get infection, your glucose levels will go up. When your body is under stress, as it is when you have an illness like a cold, sinus condition, or the flu, an infection like a urinary tract infection, yeast infection, ear infection or eye infection, an injury such as having a broken bone, a foot ulcer, or are recovering from surgery, or even sometimes during difficult emotional times, hormones are released to help your body handle the stress. These hormones often cause symptoms that signal they are fighting the stressor, such as a rise in your temperature. Another common result of these hormones is a rise in blood glucose, sometimes to extremely high and dangerous levels. It is also possible for your body to be fighting an infection without having any obvious symptoms. If you notice your blood glucose is high and there is no other reason for the change, you may be fighting an illness or infection. With or without symptoms, high blood glucose will make it harder for your body to fight the illness. If you don't take action, your illness will probably get worse, which can raise your blood glucose even more. If this damaging cycle of illness and high blood glucose is not controlled, you can end up in the emergency room or even in the intensive care unit of the hospital. Take action against your illness, infection, or injury by checking your temperature regularly, staying warm, getting plenty of rest, and drinking lots of fluids. Especially when you're ill, you may not feel like getting up and making food for yourself or taking your medication. Because you may not feel like doing anything other than resting while you are sick, take the time to set up a sick day plan ahead of time. But we like to plan ahead so that when you're ill, you'll know exactly what to do. Your plan will guide you through this period, helping you maintain the delicate balance between taking care of your illness and managing your diabetes. Your sick day plan will be individualized for you. One of the first things that we do want to make sure that you do is to have your blood sugar checked more frequently than probably you're used to doing. More than two times a day? Yes. At least four times a day. Your sick day plan will tell you how often to check your blood glucose, what medications to take, what you can eat and drink, when to call your diabetes care team, and if you should check your urine for ketones. Ketones are made when your body breaks down fat for energy instead of using glucose. High blood glucose together with a high level of ketones means your body is not making enough insulin to properly move the glucose out of your bloodstream and into your cells for energy. This can lead to ketoacidosis, which if left uncontrolled, can lead to coma or death. So you may be told to check your urine for ketones every four to six hours, or when your blood glucose is higher than 240 milligrams per deciliter. The symptoms of ketoacidosis include stomach pain, confusion, trouble breathing or heavy breathing, dry mouth, 
or fruity breath. You may have other symptoms of ketoacidosis, so talk to your diabetes care team about what to watch for. If you are at risk for ketoacidosis and experience any of these symptoms with high levels of ketones in your urine, call your diabetes care team right away. If you take medications to control your blood glucose, including insulin, continue to take your medications even if you can't eat as you normally do. You may think you don't need as much medication, but you do because your body is under stress. And remember, when it's stressed, your body makes extra glucose and has trouble using insulin. So your diabetes care team may recommend that you take more medication than usual. Insulin may become part of your sick day plan to help your body use the glucose for energy, keeping your blood glucose in a healthy range and helping you feel better faster. A lot of the, the medications like uh, NyQuil and some of those things, they have a tremendous amount of sugar in them. Check ahead of time with your doctor or pharmacist about which over-the-counter remedies for symptoms such as congestion or diarrhea do not contain sugar or alcohol. Have these medications on hand before you get sick, and every now and then check to see they have not expired. What you eat and drink when your body is under stress is important to your healing and recovery. If you can stick to your normal meal plan, that's best. In addition, drink calorie-free liquids like water and diet soda to keep from becoming dehydrated. But a lot of times when you're sick, you're not able to eat as you normally would. Work with your diabetes care team to develop a sick day menu and keep these foods on hand. When you are too sick to stick to your regular meal plan, consult your sick day menu. Remember, your body still needs nutrients, so try to take in your normal number of carbohydrates by eating foods like gelatin, crackers, soup, or applesauce. If even these mild foods are too hard to eat, you may have to stick to drinking liquids. Regular sodas, juice, sports drinks, popsicles, or sherbet will help give you the necessary carbohydrates. And finally, your sick day plan will tell you when to call your diabetes care team. You may need to call your care team if your blood glucose results are higher than 300 milligrams per deciliter for two readings in a row. You have a fever of 101 degrees or higher. You are unable to drink fluids or keep fluids down for at least four hours. Your symptoms include vomiting or diarrhea or you have symptoms of dehydration or ketoacidosis, including stomach pain, confusion, trouble breathing, dry mouth, or fruity breath. Okay, that's what I'll do. I'll call you in the morning. Being prepared for an illness means you should have certain supplies on hand to help you cope. These include a list of telephone numbers, a notebook, a thermometer, extra medication, prescription, and over-the-counter, a blood glucose monitor with extra test strips, if needed, keto sticks to check your urine for ketones, sick day menus and the foods that are suggested in them, and a written copy of your sick day plan. Check off while make your... your list of phone numbers should include all members of your diabetes care team, including your doctor, diabetes educator, registered dietitian and pharmacist. And don't forget your contact person, a family member, friend or neighbor, who can check in on you from time to time. I would like for you to call me in about two hours, check on me. All these numbers Hello. should be posted by your telephone. Yes, it is helpful to keep close track of your illness in a notebook. 
keep track of your medications, what, when, and how much you're taking, your temperature, what, when, and how much you're eating, and whether you're able to eat solid foods, and any symptoms you may be having. All of this information can help you and your diabetes care team decide the best way to fight your illness. Keep a written copy of your sick day plan and supplies together in one place so you know where to find them when you aren't feeling well. Creating a sick day plan before you get sick makes it easier for you to control your diabetes, while at the same time giving your body a chance to rest and recover. So on the days when you are sick, you can focus on what's important, feeling better. Life is all about dealing with the unexpected. But when the unexpected is an emergency or disaster, the daily routines you have in place to manage your diabetes can be disrupted. This can be a serious threat to your health. Whether your power goes out for an extended period of time, you can't leave your house because of a snowstorm or flooding, or you are evacuated because of a hurricane, tornado, or fire, you need a plan to deal with the emergency and stay safe. Start by creating an emergency supply kit. Your kit should include an extra blood glucose meter, test strips, lancing device, lancets, and logbook and pen, extra batteries for your meter, extra over-the-counter medications and prescriptions you take. If you take insulin, extra syringes, pen needles, or pump supplies. A sharps container or empty hard plastic bottle with a tight-fitting lid to dispose of used lancets and syringes. Alcohol wipes. Urine ketone test strips. A glucagon emergency kit if needed. Quick-acting carbohydrate foods like glucose tablets, orange juice, regular soda, or hard candies. Bottled water and non-perishable foods, enough for at least three days. First aid supplies, like bandages and foot care items. A cell phone and a flashlight and extra batteries. It is also a good idea to keep a written record of your diabetes routine, prescription information, and emergency contact numbers in your kit. Don't forget to include the numbers of your family members, diabetes care team, local hospital, Red Cross and American Diabetes Association. Put any written documents in a watertight plastic bag. Every now and then, check your emergency kit to make sure your medications or foods have not expired. Make sure the batteries on all your supplies are working and make sure everyone in your household knows where the kit is stored and that it can be easily found in case of an emergency. Always keep at least a three-day supply of insulin on hand in case of an emergency. Open bottles of insulin and pens can be stored at room temperature for up to 28 days, but should be discarded after that. Try to keep any unopened insulin cool until you need it. Be aware extreme temperatures can affect your insulin, so try to store your insulin in a cool place without freezing it. If your insulin has been exposed to extreme heat or cold, discard it as soon as you get new insulin. If you do find yourself in the middle of an emergency or disaster, stay calm. Wear your medical identification stating that you have diabetes and try to stick to your daily routine as much as possible. Do your best to take your medications and to eat your meals at your regular times. This is not the time to put yourself at risk for low or high blood glucose. High temperatures or dampness can often lead to foot infections, especially if you can't change your socks and shoes on a regular basis. Check your feet each day for cuts, sores, or blisters. If you are dealing with an emergency or disaster, 
follow the instructions of local officials and evacuate if needed. Don't be afraid to get help. Reach out to friends, family, and your diabetes care team to get the support you need to handle this unexpected situation and manage your diabetes. If you don't already have a plan in place, talk to your diabetes care team about some things you can do to get prepared. You can't always predict what life will bring. You will probably have to deal with illness at some point, or you may even find yourself in the middle of an emergency. Having a plan in place before the unexpected happens can make it possible for you to handle the situation and still manage your diabetes until you recover.